Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to add the default Qt widgets and also how to add the custom widgets that come with the Pi One Dark project. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe so you don't miss any videos. This project is now available for download with early access to all Patreon supporters. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to create Pi One Dark pages and left and right columns. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to add widgets using Qt Designer and also how to manually add these widgets. As a first example, let's start by adding a standard Qt widget using drag and drop. After that I will add a name to the Q push button and also add its minimum height with 40 pixels. After that I will add two more frames to the left column, these frames will serve as a container for the layouts that we will add soon. I'm going to use frames to be able to add the maximum and minimum height to the layouts. After that we will rename the name of each widget to find them within our codes. Once that's done I'll add two buttons, one inside each frame we just created, and then I'll add a layout as a child for each frame as shown in the video. Next I'll rename the child layout as well to make it easier to find. I'm doing this because unfortunately Qt Designer won't let me add a child layout inside the widget without having some other child widgets inside it. Now let's reset all the layout margins values and also the spacing layout as shown in the video. Whenever you create a new frame, change the frame shape parameter to no frame. Doing this will avoid unwanted margins on operating systems like Linux and Mac OS. We can delete the buttons we created earlier, but we'll still keep the child layout applied to the frames as shown in the video. In these layouts, we will be adding our custom widgets. Let's export this layout to our application, as we learned in the previous tutorial. Go to the Form menu, View Python Code, and after that click the Save button and replace the existing file as shown in the video. I'm going to open the VS Code so we can edit this file that we just exported. Open this file, and then replace the header for the Qt Core which contains all the PySide 6 modules we are using in this project. When we run the application we can see the button we created inside Qt Designer, and also the blank frames we created. You can also customize the widgets directly by Qt Designer if you want, but prefer to use custom widgets as I'll show you later, because by doing this they will receive the colors of the themes that are created for Pi One Dark. Now I will teach you how to add widgets into the layouts we create in Qt Designer manually. This is a very important procedure and everyone who uses PyQt or PySide needs to learn. These widgets are located within the widgets folder and import in the line of code shown in the video. Whenever you create your custom widgets, add them inside this same folder and add their path to the init file at the root of the folder. I'll start by creating a custom widget called Pi Push Button, which is nothing more than a Q Push Button with custom parameters, which will receive custom colors according to the current theme, using the self themes function as shown. You can access the name of each color just by opening the theme file and identifying the desired color that is inside a JSON file. Place the objects referring to the desired color as shown in the video. Our widget was created, but it's not visible in the application yet, that's because we need to add it to a layout. We can locate the layout we just created in the Qt Designer following the objects, self, UI, left column and menus, by doing this we will find our layout where we will use the add layout function to apply our widget to the application. Inside the add widget function, add our button that we just created as a parameter. Once this is done when running our application we can see our button applied to the user interface. See how simple this process is. 
we can use the set minimum height function to set a minimum height for the button, which in this case will also be 40 pixels. You can use whatever colors you want from the theme in your custom widgets, but try to create a pattern so that when you change the appearance of your application, this widget doesn't have strange colors and patterns. We've added one more widget now to our second layout, which is the BTN2 layout. We will now add a toggle button to this layout as shown in the video following the same example as the previous button. This toggle button has tutorials here on the channel where you can go and see how it was created. After creating the widget we will add it to the layout as we did with the previous button. When we run our application we see the button successfully added. If you want to center this button within the layout, just use the QT Align Center parameters. After doing this we can run the application and see that our toggle button was created and centered correctly. To delete this message generated in the terminal, just open our custom widget and delete the print function that I created to use as a debug and see if the data is working correctly. To add the logo to the center of the application, I'm using the QSVG widget that can render SVG images natively in QT without losing resolution. I'm going to use the set SVG image function to get the SVG image that is inside the SVG images folder. Now I'm going to add it to the layout that is located inside the load pages object. The layout name is logo layout and you can find it by opening QT Designer if you have any questions. I add the same way we did with the other widgets, and when we run the application we see that the logo is deformed. To solve this problem we just have to center it on the screen, and it will be displayed with its real size when it was created. Finally, I'll create a great example using a QT line edit and a QPush button widget to create a small form that will print the text that was typed in QLine edit on the terminal and then clear the text. Let's now add these two widgets we just created to the same layout. After that let's run the application to see if it's working. With the widgets displaying correctly, I'm going to create a very simple built-in function, just as an example. This method will be called print text, and when the button is pressed it will print the text you typed in QLine edit and then clear all the current text. You can replace these widgets as homework with the custom widgets present in this project, the PyLine edit and the Pi push button. After running our application, we type a text and press the send button. After that we can see that our function is working correctly and printing all the type text. We end here another tutorial. Reminding everyone that the source code for all tutorials and the source code for Pi One Dark is available with early access to all Patreon supporters. Pi One Dark will be released to everyone on August 1, 2021, and will be an open source project that can be used for studies and commercially. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.